gonna short, uh, we will be short one board member from the city. Um, Councilwoman Robertson will not be able to join us this morning. Um, and so because of our voting rules, we have to have two uh, from each locality. I don't want to hold up the meeting though, sitting here waiting on somebody to come. So we'll just go through everything of the informational purposes and then we'll circle back and vote um, once the other person arrives, if they arrive. Is that okay? All right. Uh, do we have any public comments? I think I received an email that we didn't have any public comments written anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. Introductions. Thank you. Um, let's go around the room uh, at the table uh, first, and then we'll start back in the left hand corner. Just tell us who you are and what organization you represent. But we'll start here. Uh, Tyrone Nelson and Michael Kim. Cheryl Adams, GRTC. Bonnie Ashley, General Counsel. Lincoln Saunders, City Richmond. Todd Garrett, in Rico County. Dan Smith, in Rico County. Dave Anderson, representing Chesterfield. Barb Smith, Chesterfield. Jim Engel, Chesterfield. All right. Tony Bird, to recommend the CRTC. Please wear that. Tommy Thompson, Director of Procurement, GRTC. Angela Haynes, Procurement Services Administrator, GRTC. Good morning, Ashley Nixon and Angela Organizational Advancement, GRTC. Sam State Director of Planning and Scheduling, GRTC. Jan Swift, Executive Assistant, GRTC. John Zetterl, Chief Financial Administrative Officer, GRTC. Adrian Flores, Chief Development Officer, GRTC. Uh, Richard Pickens, RPA Rapid Monica Carr, Safety Service Compliance Manager, GRTC. Uh, Anthony Cotter, Director of Risk Management, GRTC. Tim Barr, Chief of Transit Operations, GRTC. Thanks to her, Director of Operations, GRTC. Good morning, Bonnie. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, now, public comments. Anyone in the room here? I don't think. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, anybody? Uh, comments, public comments this morning. Good morning, Good morning. Board Chair, members of the board. The public meeting notice, meeting agenda, agenda attachments for this January 17th, 2023, standing meeting of the board of directors, ride finders. Old Dominion Transit Management Company were posted on January 9th, 2023 at RideGRTC.com. Per meeting notice, all written comments received via email by Mike Frontiero prior to 5 p.m. on the day preceding a meeting provided to all board members the night before the meeting are read during the public meeting comment period of the meeting by staff following the two-minute speaking limit and will be included in the meeting minutes of this meeting. Also, per the meeting notice, this meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. For this meeting, we received no written public comments. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Mason. All right, hearing no public comments, um, we cannot approve the uh, board, meeting, board meeting minutes now. Um, consent agenda, same thing, but are there any questions? about any of the consent agenda items. That way we can just circle back and vote on it when we um, when our next when our member comes. Anything for um hurt zinc um sink or zenzarella? I want Mr. Chair if I may. Mr. Okay. Hurt. Mr. Um, hurt, where are you? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> or it, it got a question for me. Absolutely. Mr. Chair, the uh, first agenda item, the maintenance and support agreement for the software, just one quick question for Dex is, um, you know, GRC first bought, bought that software in 2003. We're talking 19, 20 years now. I just want to make sure uh, that when I'm reading this correct, that that is still a single source provider. Is it because of the equipment we have or the market isn't there or it's 20 years? I just want to make sure it's still a single source for that stuff you need. Right. So that's software based. So that's software. They see these for planning the routes and things like that. And they are the only company that basically makes that software. So they're sole source and that they are the primary for that software. Gotcha. Um, we've started looking at some other options, um, just not there yet. But we discussed with planning and just trying to see if there's some other software that are be better. Um, there will be a huge transition when we do that, but so I think we'll get that also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Anybody else? Uh, anyone else? Questions? Under the same. 
All right, hearing none, let's move to information items, um, updating this for the recent and upcoming procurements. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Procurements January update can be found on pages 22 through 24 of your board packet. Planning has one new project on this month's report. It is the downtown transfer center study. Um, GRTC would like a consultant to help support us in evaluating site requirements for a permanent location, um, the economic impact of the transfer center, and the potential for joint development. I have no other updates. I'm sorry, let me just go over this real quick. I apologize. That specific line item is on page 24 of the report. Uh, the budget for this study is $560,000. The budget has been approved and we are in the planning stage. I have no other updates at this time. Are there any questions? All right, no questions. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Microtransit uh, implementation plan. Micro trend and the implementation plan. Yes. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Mr. Board. Just wanted to give you guys a very brief update um, on where we are with the micro transit project. Yes. Why are you doing that? Um, we are coming to the board um, with the request to that would be the answers is an action item. But before we get to that, I just want to give you guys an update. We did end phase one, which was identifying the five zones. Um, we started with 30 total zones throughout the study, and it was over a year process, data input, working with um, all the jurisdictions. We, uh, we narrowed it down to 10, uh, and eventually that was narrowed down to five. Uh, those five zones are Ashland, Howitton, um, Washington Park, the Delia zone, which is in the up at the top. Um, San Echo, which is a cross between uh, New Kent and Henrico, and then North Chester Northwest Zone. So. Uh, we gave updates as to our TPO as well as the CBTA of where we are with those five zones. This gives you a little bit more detail. I'm not going to go through them, but on the slide, if you look at it, it shows you um, this is a forward working service area characteristics, the span of service, um, what is the estimate of ridership cost um, in some of the key activity centers, and whether it's a first mile, last mile, or a um, route with phase of proposal. In the next phase, we will actually sit down with the jurisdictions, um, work with the public, and find the zones um, to make sure boundaries that we have or what will be optimal for the zones, um, as well as the stands and use of additional projections. And that will help with some final determination of operating and capital cost. Um, a big benefit of the microtransit is that it is a pilot, and if the zones are not um, exactly right, you have the ability and flexibility um, to shrink them, expand them, move them along. Uh, so, this is a work in progress as we go through this. How will we? Um, I guess we haven't figured out yet about third party who will be the third party. It's right now we just know it'll be a third party, but we don't know who yet. Correct. We have to look through the process and contract for that. Uh, here's a highlight of the estimated cost. Um, I'm actually going to jump down to that bottom where it says the ZRPT trip program. So there was there are five five zones. Um, we applied for all five of um, the trip programs, um, and they came back and they awarded us three, which is exciting. Um, and those three are the Enrico on the Washington Park and Zilli Avenue, the Chesterfield, and the Enrico we get Sandston Elko one. Um, the other two, Palatine and Ashland, uh, we do have budget sources identified. 
Uh, you'll see down there in year one, year two, year three, where we identify um, ARPA. Um, but we are additionally applying for funds, um, the demo grant program on the DRPT, um, and there's a decision out there now for the TRIP program. Uh, instead of the cap step down of 80, 60, 30, um, they're closing an 80 uh, throughout the whole kind of program. So we will apply for that and that to group, as well as uh, once the DRPT demo. We do get those other two, you'll be able to apply for the trip program in the next year. So I'm uh, trying to make this as sustainable as possible. Um, but the overall operating cost for those 3.1 million in year one, 3.2 in year two, uh, and then 3.3 in year three, and there's additional kind of startup costs for the two. Um, sample one is the microtransit manager to keep this going. Um, and then some software and infrastructure costs. Those would be like um, shelters, pensions, um, any sort of additional ADA access that would be needed. Um, so, where we are with the next steps? You um, mentioned refining the zone, to refine operational capital costs. The huge piece for being successful is the communication plan. Um, I mentioned working with the jurisdictions, that's really big. We've already started setting up those meetings before. Um, the contract with the, with the consultant kicks off. Um, you can stay engaged with them because it's ultimately their zone to operate officially to their areas. Um, but communication, branding, marketing um, will be all specific to um, the individuals you're working with. Um, procurement, you can ask that question, procurement support, and then uh, we're looking at about 36 month implementation support compass and finance. This will be a new mode for GRTC. Um, very exciting uh, to go be on the um, the timeline. Um, so the refining and the communication will be done in the first one to four months. Um, the will happen in month five. The goal here is to launch by summer fall um, 2023 with the first one and have everything up and going by spring 2024. So with that, are there any questions? Um, quick, okay. yeah. quick questions on a major point, but in launching anything new, uh, obviously communication is a year. I noticed that marketing is just a year one price tag and year two and three had none. Is that, um, is there a reason we don't have budgeted continued marketing of that to try to get the best chance of success? Um, I'm not reading too much into that in those lines. You're not. Um, as far as what the consultants are helping us with, they'll help us develop the plan, um, the approach, the branding we'll be doing it in house. Gotcha. Uh, the marketing dollars, that is a good point. I believe with the, and Sam, we can help me, the trip program startup costs are actually for year one. So I think we would look to see what we would budget for for years two and three, depending on what we would need. Thank you. Yes. So um, I know this is for the first batch of zones. Um, Assuming that those are successful, how do you foresee rolling out the next, the next batches? Yeah, I already um, started talking to the team. Uh, there were several that came up after. So why were we not in the pilot zones? We were interested as well. Um, already working with them to discuss what we need to do to get you guys ready. Um, and I mean, these funding sources, they, even like the ones that are more rural out there, maybe Ashland would be eligible for like 53, 11, um, sustainability as well. So working with them to apply for whether it's trip, demo, or other ones, I would like to work with them um, yeah, next year. So if we do go back and back to the CBTA for additional funds, we can look at the other zones. And then ultimately, do you think that you'll need to have staff here dedicated to microtransactions? Yeah, we have a manager so far. We see more staff is needed after that um, in this first phase. Yeah. But we're looking to hire that person hopefully in the spring so they're on board before you can get to that point. Yeah, and that'll be for the three-year period, but down the road. The funding is for the three-year period. I mean, that person, this program continues and to continue on. Yeah. What did you say about the funding? Is, we're waiting, or you said that we've been approved? Yeah, so with the uh, Trenton Rider Incentive Program, the DRPT, three of the zones have been funded um, for three years eligibility. Okay. Um, right now it is an 80, 60, 30 step down. So the other match would come from the voter league dollars for those three zones. And right now the goal is the other two zones, unless we do the additional funds, which we are applying for with the TRP demo, um, then we'll use the other funds for that. So what are the, the two that didn't get funded? Uh, Powhatan and Ashland, the ones that are already yeah. into our network. 
Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Uh, Adrian, are your projections for operating uh, considering uh, fare free throughout the pilot or how did you? Yes, these would be the wrong costs. Uh -huh. But that also is not necessarily determined what that is, but it comes before the board to make that decision. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. All right, we're going into staff reports now. So you guys, hopefully you see the order. Um, safety service, safety first service report and operator staffing vehicle facility report and major staffing and ridership and quarterly performance can go together right comments by that report. So just go ahead and make them in that one if you don't mind. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'll be going over safety performance report for the month of December. It's found on pages 33 to 37 of the board packet. Starting off with the um, external events, the month of November we have 45, and in December we have 47. So, not a whole lot of variance there, but we did notice that we had an extreme amount of non preventable accidents from the month of November to the month of December. When we broke that down and found that a lot of those accidents, the majority of those accidents, were mirror tap type accidents. Um, not only when the bus was stopped, but we normally see the bus was stopped to be able to go by and tap the mirrors, but we noticed that the bus was rolling if we had those type of accidents. So we took a look at that and wanted to make sure that we sent out our announcements, got a coaching training staff involved to make sure that the operators are paying attention to their surroundings to make sure at least try to cut down on those type of accidents. Um, when it comes to specialized care, I uh, did see um, seven traffic accidents or traffic events. Preventable was six and non preventable was one. Um, did see a little bit of an increase in those numbers, and we're constantly working with the um, next transit management to try to come up with uh, ways to reduce those numbers as well. Assault, we did have one verbal situation where we can with the operator, no physical um, for both. Care and uh, fix it up. And if there are no questions, they can please say the phone before the moment. Who determined verbal? The assault. I'm assuming the operator let us know that that was an assault. Yes, sir. Whenever we get a situation like that, we investigate it, pull the footage, and have to say, talk with the operator, uh, make sure that the operator is on the investigation. You know, let's just talk with the operator. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Question. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, everyone. Uh, I'll be going briefly with the operations report starting on page 38 of the board packet. Uh, you'll see some slight improvement in some of our key performance indicators, uh, particularly uh, with the absenteeism. And on time performance on both fixed route and specialized went up slightly. Uh, as far as staffing goes, current as of the end of December, we're at 236 full time, 27 part time operators. Uh, we have 11 uh, in training, various stages. Uh, five of those will be graduating over the next uh, few days. Uh, we do have a new booking, uh, which is our schedule chain, uh, which will go into effect uh, in this month on January 30th. Uh, we also have a new class, our first class of 2023, which is next Monday. Um, it looks like projected about eight in that class. Um, last year we had 10 classes. Uh, we hope to have at least that many this year as well. Uh, unless there are any other questions, that concludes my report. What's the uh, go back? Um, I'm slow. So, what, what, did you, what did you say the operator numbers were again? 236 full time, 27 part time, 11 in various stages of training. And what we'll, we'll compared to last year? Uh, last month we were at, uh, let's say, 230. Oh, boy, you got to know that one. <laughs> it was in that similar range. Um, I guess ultimately I'm looking every month, I'm looking for to go up. Yeah. 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 So I, make, indicate that to us. Just say, it's a plus. Plus or minus? Yeah. For the previous yeah. one, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I can get it for you in about five minutes, but I'll talk my head in this can. Uh, we yeah. to you. We'll do that for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I have a couple points on page 40 for my colleagues' sake. Um, 
I don't necessarily think it's a question, but I think it's a point of observation. Since September, on the page 40 chart, on operator full-time equivalents have gone up on the purple bar. Um, on the next chart, since September, the total turnover, the green bar has gone down, involuntary gone to zero. Uh, on the next chart, annual operator turnover is the lowest you know, since 2020. You know, indicators here. I don't want to steal Mr. Bird's thunder, but we're going to hear that he's in great shape in the mechanic shop. I've, I've been reading ahead, sorry. Um, I just think that those kinds of trends, when we're meeting our committees, Mr. Chair, these are things that we're talking about in finance, how we continue those. I know we're talking about it in personnel. I know we're talking about it in operations. But I just want to bring the point forward that, you know, that purple bar is going up, the green bar is going down, and the annual is starting to see itself back to normalization. The only thing I would ask, sir, is that in a minute we're gonna see, I believe we're gonna see ridership on a chart of a five yard, a five year tier. I would love if possible on these staffing charts, if you could show us um, 2019, because quite simply, that's the last time we were quote unquote normal and it would be helpful to see 2019 as a comparison, if possible. Um, I know 2020, when you get down to page 41, with those retention bars, I get it that it'll get a little busy when you add a fifth year, but I think 2019 for this group's comparison would be helpful because really that's the goal to get back to. That's the last time we really finished a year. I mean, March of 2020 was probably the turning point for a lot of what we do. Uh, but I, I just want to make that point, Mr. Chair, that when you, your question is spot on, and what direction it was going. And I think that's not the only indicator that's moving in the right direction. A lot of the KPIs we're seeing are moving in the correct direction. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if I go back to your earlier question, in the month of November, we had 231 full-time and 27 part-time, so it's a plus five uh, net for in December. And 11 in class and eight behind it. You know, and, and, and quite frankly, when you're, when you're looking at 19 in class and we know that that could turn into 14, could turn into 15, could turn into what it is. But when retention numbers on page 40, the bottom of page 40, when they show that, that's going to end up continuing to be a plus. So. Now, one thing I will give you a preview as far as uh, January goes. Uh, we do have five operators that retired this past month. Uh, first of the year. You, that's not unusual for first of the year to have um, X amount of operators retire. So that will reflect on my next report. Uh, so that will dip it a little bit as we uh, go to those retention numbers. You should have just, you just. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to ask that question before it comes up. Sit one meeting, sit one meeting with Lynn. And <laughs> well, one meeting at a time. <laughs> You got me going back, so I'm trying to get you more yeah. formal. Okay? <laughs> All right. You, any any other questions? All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Yes, sir. I'm here for the maintenance report. It's found on page 42 of the board packet. Currently, the maintenance department is back to pre-pandemic levels as far as employees, uh, and we are still accepting applications. That ends the maintenance report. <laughs> no question. Uh, any questions? So you almost, so you pretty much finished the uh, catalytic converter um, piece. Oh, it is finished. We only have two or three left. Those okay. are the uh, vehicles that are uh, waiting on engines. Once we put the engines in, we'll put the new converters <laughs> on and they'll be ready to serve. And you only have one, you have one vehicle. I have none. Wow. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I was going to apologize for stealing this thunder, but he just, that's, that's thunder right there. <laughs> uh, that's impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, ridership Bank Court. Thank 
Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Unfortunately, my report is quite being short as well. You'll look at the local fixed group. Uh, we're up a little over 10% from December 2019. Uh, obviously, that's a big thing to see. You also see we're down uh, over 5% from November to December. That's a normal seasonal pattern that we see year after year. Uh, so we're not concerned about that. Uh, looking at kind of that bottom line total fixed group ridership, uh, current December to uh, pre pandemic, you know, we're, we're seeing pretty significant variance there. Um, about 50,000 beneficials was due to a uh, pulse. Um, I just want to point out, you know, the pulse it does continue to be down, but we still need to restore midday and weekend service. So, we're not quite back up to pre pandemic levels. Uh, we're hopeful that when we do, we will see the ridership. Uh, you know, finally start to tick back up on that. So, um, as soon as we get the operators, that's very high on the priority list. Um, there were any questions on that one, or should I continue to the board report? So, you may have just answered it, and I'm just behind. Um, so, I've been seeing some folk on social media talk about routes. And so, where are we with routes? Are we losing routes, or, you know, it, it seems like some of the stuff I've been seeing makes it seem like um, we're having some route, tr right, route trouble. So we do still have some more service that we need to add back once we get the operators. Uh, the pulse is not quite back at pre pandemic service. The five is not back at pre pandemic service. Um, and a few other little things, uh, obviously the express routes, uh, we cut a bunch of those, um, one. So those are back where they were. Uh, we are making some service changes uh, during a couple of weeks. Those go into effect January 29th. Uh, that's not losing routes, but it is uh, changing how the ones are structured with that split at downtown. Uh, and we are kind of reducing some service on 77 and 78 uh, to kind of be trying to be operator neutral on those changes since those are lower ridership routes. So, and <coughs> I don't know if this is for Sam or for you. I'm um, sure we. So let's say we 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 continue to trend positively with um, operators once we get out of the January. Department. Is the plan to do restoration of some of this work before? I mean, like is this calendar year 23 fixable? Not all of it, but some of it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Well, again, it depends on the recruitment efforts and retention, but that is the plan. Once we are back positive with operators, we will restore what we cut and then focus on expansion. But to restore the service level back to where they were is the first priority. Okay. And that's something that could be achievable this calendar year. Okay. All right, any other questions before we move? Are there any other variables on the pulse routes that we're looking at other than ridership? I mean, is, is, is the schedules are all the same month to month? Uh, yeah, they get tweaked um, a little bit with every booking. We have three bookings a year, but we haven't made any major changes to the pulse since May of 2022 when we uh, reduced that weekend service or reduced weekend service and put back some of the peak frequency service. Um, also note that you know we do try and track some external factors. Um, we did a little regression analysis this fall to kind of look at the pulse ridership since that's just not been coming back the way the local has. Uh, and we did find that um, unemployment, the number of positive COVID cases, and gas prices, when taken together, uh, were seventy nine percent correlated with changes in ridership of pulse. Obviously, correlation is not causation, but it is something you know worth no looking at, worth noting. Uh, that the external factors are impact, impacting ridership as well. So. All right, there are no more questions. I'll move on to the quarterly report. So this is found on page 47 of your board packet. Uh, first category that we look at is only PRT. Um, <laughs> I think we all know what BRT is by now, so I don't want to worry about that. Uh, looking at pulse ridership trends here for the uh, quarter two, we see ridership is down uh, about four uh, percent year over year. Looking at those quarters, um, so you know, as I mentioned, we're still down um, midday and weekday frequency. We think that is driving a bit of that. Um, you know, 
this this kind of represents the last quarter that we should see those significant changes reflected from when we made um, those bigger service cuts in December 21 uh, because of our operator shortage. So hopefully next quarter um, we'll, we'll start to see a little more clarity in these year over year numbers and trends uh, in terms of you know, what's happening minus those service cuts, what's just organically happening year over year. Moving on to our arterial category, um, these are routes that primarily travel on major arter arterials serving uh, major activity centers. Uh, if we look at the charts on page, the charts on page 51, uh, I'll draw your attention to Route 5. Um, you know, that one's flagged as uh, a route to watch because its passengers per trip are low relative to the rest of its peers in this group. Um, I would draw your attention to the uh, ridership and service miles, some of those more left columns there. Uh, you'll see that the service miles were cut a lot more. We've seen a much more of a decrease in service miles than we did in ridership, looking at those year over year quarterly numbers. Uh, so that means we're being more efficient. You know, we're getting more passengers per trip uh, and a lower cost per passenger. Uh, however, you know, this is reflecting the service changes made in December for one, not to be the dead horse, uh, but at least we're not seeing ridership loss commiserate with the level of service that we have to cut because of the operator shortfall. So you know, five does remain a very high priority to get that service back once we have the operators. Um, also draw your attention to the twos. Um, these are, you know, some of our higher ridership routes uh, when taken together, and they've been subject to some long-term detours. Um, and there's another one coming their way. It will also be sort of long-term, uh, but they still are gaining ridership despite that. So that's a good positive sign that we like to see that ridership is increasing despite, you know, a detour that's messing with the on-time project, <coughs> making it a less reliable route, more circuitous. So that's a positive thing I wanted to point out for you all. Moving on to the community radio routes. Uh, these generally connect uh, neighborhoods kind of to the core service network, uh, getting people around the region. We look at the chart here on page 53, uh, 76. I feel like I always mention this one. Uh, you know, it doesn't quite do as well relative to its friends in the group. Um, I do want to point out that is a route that we're going to be looking hard at as part of the transit strategic plan, which should be kicking off in the next few months. Um, this route, it's eastern terminus over at the DMV Drive next to the Science Museum. Um, it used to meet up with a bunch of other routes and it no longer has those connections. So it's just sort of, you know, missing that impetus for ridership at the eastern end. So we want to look at structurally that route as part of the TST process, um, you know, holistically with the rest of the system and hopefully address the uh, problems that this route seems to be having. Um, on the positive side of the scale, Route 12, that's got the highest ridership in the group, uh, and it's getting more efficient uh, beginning in April. This is one of the routes that we're changing the alignment a little bit of so that it can serve the downtown transfer station all day, every day. Um, so we'll be watching closely to see how that uh, you know, slight alignment change is going to impact ridership going forward. And then we have the circulator slash feeder slash connector group. Uh, these are really about connecting neighborhoods to each other. We look at the chart on page 55. Uh, we'll draw your attention to Route 93. Um, you know, that is a route that we are going to look at replacing with Micro Transit. One of those zones that we got trip funding for um, is that zone in Henrico County that kind of overlaps this and then adds some service area to. Uh, we're kind of excited about that replacement. This route only operates during peak periods, so we'll be able to give people access to all day transit service uh, by replacing this with micro transit. Um, all right, and then the last category here is the express routes. Um, I will uh, you know, refrain from talking about the 95 again. I think that's one that we're definitely going to be looking at through the TSP. Um, we also made a, a slight routing change to how it's circulating downtown on its outbound trips to Petersburg. Um, hopefully, that'll make the change we made will just make it less confusing for the riders looking toward that route. Uh, so, we'll see if there's any change in ridership next quarter. We'll look at that. I'm um, also drawing your attention to Route 82. 
Um, you know, that's got ridership increasing by 9%, uh, but the service miles year over year increased by almost 20%. Um, so we do see that route being less efficient. Um, we are currently in the process of retooling our express uh, ridership analysis that we've been doing every month, uh, just kind of internally, so that we can get a better look at the trip level and what's going on and see if maybe it makes sense to reallocate some of those express resources among other routes. So that's something I will be bringing to you in the future board meeting once we've had a chance to do that. And then moving on to on-time performance, our quarter two system performance was 67%. Our goal is 80%. Um, we did see a slight uptick in the earlies. Um, I just wanted to note, um, one thing my staff noticed was that the express routes have uh, kind of higher percentages of earlies than some of our other routes. Um, so that's something we want to work with operations to determine if maybe there's a scheduling issue to address, like maybe the layover point. Uh, is it safe or it doesn't feel good to the operators and they, they feel like they need to leave early. So that's something we want to look into if we can fix that for April. Um, and that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Mr. Chair, I don't think it's a question. It's just a, a little bit of uh, thought that I'm thinking about with the BRT and some of the information. I don't know that I'm concerned about it, but I'll be curious and watching closely. The BRT happens to be running along one of the most robust development lines so in terms of growth where there might be more choice ridership. And so I think the balance of <clears throat> reduced ridership in an area where you've got a lot of potential riders, I think is gonna be something we need to watch closely. And also I'd be curious if any staff can speak to how we communicate with um, new developments in the community uh, as to uh, you know, when a, when a large apartment complex comes online or something like that, that has a lot of potential riders going to, you know, work and entertainment, uh, do we reach out to them and should we? Um, just a question. So, um, I know my staff isn't currently reaching out to them. Um, I don't know if communication marketing would like to speak to that at all, but I, I don't think we get a lot of, hey, this apartment complex is opening. We usually kind of see it uh, come through the development news pipeline like everyone else, uh, and we try to note that. And obviously if there's detours associated with this construction, you see that. Um, but you know, I think that's a really good idea that it's something that we should kind of be tracking uh, and maybe working more closely with the city and the counties on. Um, Making sure we do that outreach. Um, to that point, I will say for us, somebody who rides Pulse frequently um, to city hall meetings, especially, um, there are a lot of students and staff at VCU Health that drive, ride the bus to go back west, wherever that destination may be. Um, I think the challenge we have is that we've done zoning that incorporates um, getting rid of parking requirements, which of course is meant to be pushing those said the people to um, progressively the neighbors that live nearby, but um, they don't understand the purpose of choice ridership. So I think the word is out there. I think it's important if we think about how we do this communication um, that we are able to meet the on time expectation on when we know routes are happening. Um, I've missed or been late to meetings. Not just this one. I've been late to meetings um, at City Hall because of timing with construction, delays with operators, et cetera, over the past year and a half. And so while the regression analysis is important, I do think that there has been some inconsistency that also has played into people's decisions on can I depend on that route to get me where I need to get to on time. And so just thinking through that with some capacity things. I've also been on a bus where I could not get on the bus because it was full which is awesome, but that means that I have to wait 15 minutes. And that's not always the best thing to want to do either. So we think about all these things compound to compound to create the conversation you have. And I think if we're going to meet that expectation uh, with outreach to attract more riders, we need to make sure you understand, is it recreational? Is it for work? Is it for groceries and dependency of things that need to get done? Is it for medical or health purposes? And what the time looks like throughout the day so we can make sure that we're meeting that with the schedule that you've outlined there as well. So I just wanted to put that out there from a personal um, conversation piece and my observations as well. Those are great points. And I'd like to note that we are going to be doing a system-wide origin and destination survey this spring. Uh, so we'll be able to get updated information on trip purpose uh, and kind of 
of what people's travel patterns are like and what they're really using the pulse and all the other routes for. Uh, so we haven't done one of those since 2019. Yeah. So we're excited to get some new information on that board. I know you probably are up on this, but there is a really interesting location-based QR code you can put at stops that lets people engage at each stop with a different survey. Mm -hmm. It lets you get basic five or five text questions in a simple yes or no or basic A, B, or C option that lets you get good insights by destination point. And so it can kind of get you some really good information. It's not just holistic, but more specifically on all the stops that certain aspects we're looking to get at. So just thinking through that, I'm happy to help provide some other resources for that as well. It's more, it takes more work to create that, but it's definitely very, very rewarding when it tells you by stop what people are doing. Okay. Yeah. And we can throw some money at it for Amazon gift cards or whatever else might incentivize people to click on the link, so I can see that too. All right, any other questions? Good discussion, yeah, thank you. All right, we're out of comments. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I'll be um, going over the writer comments for the month, month of December. And uh, one thing that stands out right away is um, for the month of December, we had 88 total um, complaints, which is actually a decrease, which is a good thing, um, which could be also attributed to the fact that we had improvement with the workforce as well as with um, the OGPS 10 mentioned in the report earlier. Um, when we look at the trends for the month of December, we actually had a decrease in the number of boot operator, um, no show to late schedules, which is um, pretty good as well. But we had an increase, a slight increase in the number of pass up passenger situations. So um, those complaints were investigated, those um, operators were identified, and then of course there were some coaching opportunities for those individuals. And lastly, we'll note that there were five commendations. However, I would um, I'm happy to say that one of those, in one of those commendations, there were 12 different operators that were um, identified and given commendation. And I quote, um, this person said they were extremely helpful, always on time, and they truly do a great job of greeting everyone that enters their bus. So that was a, um, you know, a really good point for us there with those commendations. And if there are no questions, this concludes my report. Any questions? Mr. Chair, just a point for our next page, page 62, just to further what I mentioned earlier. This is another example. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and control the slides, but the next one on the trending. 25 on the trend report is the lowest um, on the chart. More than half of the highest month. Five mm -hmm. is the highest number of combinations. Mm -hmm. Again, just September, October, November, December. You know, I just want to make a point longer. These numbers again join the club of moving in the correct direction. So thank you. So I see the uh, no shows and base schedules are mm -hmm. trending down pretty well. Yes, so, all right, thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, so financial report and finance subcommittee report, can they go together? Yeah. I think so. Okay, all right, let's, let's do those two together. You can just go ahead and summarize it and if we have anything to add. Okay. Okay. Morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. The uh, finance uh, report is on page 63 of your handout. Uh, in the high level, uh, very consistent with the prior month's reports. Uh, for the, this is through the five months ending November 30th, 2022. Uh, as in prior months, revenues were unfavorable to the budget. Uh, this uh, year to date, 2.85 million. And that's uh, primarily due to uh, lower federal funds uh, being reimbursed due to operating expenses being below budget. So operating expenses were below budget by $2.72 million, which basically is driving the shortfall in the revenues due to lack of reimbursements. The lower than budgeted expenses are currently being driven by headcount related. Uh, that's about a million and a half of it. It's about favorable budget materials and supplies of $420,000. And the balance of it is uh, uh, purchase transportation expenses about three hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. Continue to have a strong balance sheet. Uh, operating cash position five point four million dollars. Um, cash flow, uh, you know, as 
We are coming out of a uh, quarter. It's going to be lower at the end of December, and then it builds up in the beginning of January. No, no concerns there. Um, and on slide, there's going to pull out on slide on page 84. You will see the CDPA quarterly report for the quarter ending December 31st, 2022. Uh, we'll have to file that by February 15th with uh, CDPA. Um, it still shows, uh, you know, it shows the accumulation. There were very minimal expenses charged against it, but still healthy receipts of cash uh, during the quarter. Um, with that, that will just conclude my finance comments for year date November. Do you want to go ahead and um, give a summary of the finance committee um, meeting as far as what you presented to us? Sure, certainly. At the finance committee meeting, there were, uh, we discussed uh, you know, the 2024 uh, first pass of the operating budget as well as the uh, 2000 fiscal 24 capital budget. Uh, the reason we bring those at this point in, in time is, is that we have to file our DRPP grants uh, with the state by the end of January, so we just want to brief uh, the body on that. Um, I'll cover the highlights on the operating and the key share. We will share a couple comments on the capital piece. So the fiscal 2024 um, budget that we discussed at the finance committee had proposed operating expenses and revenues of $71.66 million. And the key assumptions on that was that obviously the zero fares continued through 2024. There's no growth in service. Um, Headcount of 520 uh, positions, which is about an increase of five positions and includes 300 authorized operator positions. Uh, one of the key drivers is is on the consent agenda is the health insurance. The premium is increasing 13% year over year. Uh, we had market coverage last year in 2021, and we had actual reduction for 21, and they put a cap on 2023's uh, brief. Our claims are which rising. If we did not utilize the cap, it would have been about 20% increase. We need to get healthier as an organization. Um, embedded in here in this number right now for the moment is the CPIU index assumption of about 0.5%. Um, June, as you recall, we approved that we're going to use the February index number, and that number will be available in early March. But just for doubtful working purposes, we're using uh, uh, the half percent increase. Uh, we're assuming that the uh, DRPT trip grant is $2.5 million from DRPT, and we have an outstanding $3 million our matching contribution that we have to determine who's going to be a match. Uh, we have DRPT TISAC funds in their revenue at 20, a little over 20 million, CBTA at 22.8 million. We have utilizing uh, full FTA 5307 for PM88 to support the operations in that budget. The VCU business partnership agreement is budgeted for one month as that contract expires uh, July 31st of 2023. And we have sponsorship and advertising revenues budgeted about $605,000, which we also have to renew as well as uh, roll out the new advertising program. So, all in all, um, with the proposed expenses at $71.66 million, uh, the revenue surplus right now at this point is about $4.3 million. So, so revenues were exceeding expenses in this first draft of the budget. So, that's the update on the operating budget. And, yeah, you should get a couple comments on the capital. Unless she's a guru in that area. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board and staff. On Thursday, when we met with the executive team, we went over our five year capital plan. We also went over our FY24 state application request. The total of the projects for FY24 is 27.2 million. Our state match request would be 16.1 million. Most of the projects will be matched at 68%. If there any if there aren't any questions. And then the last item that we talked about in uh uh, the finance committee, we talked about um, our uh, split letter with the city of Petersburg. Uh, so the takeaway from that is, is that there's going to be dialogue between Cheryl and with the folks at Petersburg this week, hopefully, when they respond to the time. Uh, the long and short, we briefed Ted there. Uh, with, 
it had been a 90 10 split, 90% of the funds going to GRTC, 10% of Petersburg. We have challenged them over the last couple of years to take this into a more of a, form, a formula driven, following how the funds are allocated to the original DCA. Our numbers are about 94 6, so 94 to GRTC. We have supplied this. This has been an ongoing discussion when Julie Tim was here. Her and myself we started this in about June of 2021. And we haven't, you know, we we're at this point. We have not uh, provided a split letter for our fiscal 2022 5307 funds and 5339 that were awarded. Petersburg has come back and requested an 8515 split. So Cheryl asked to support that, and they sent us a, some methodology that is 928. So we're through some kind of ongoing discussions. Hopefully, this week we can resolve this. Uh, so that concludes the, uh, and in addition, we also talked about in the executive session of the finance committee about some of the underlying budget assumptions <coughs> with respect to the collective bargaining as collective bargaining the contract extends through September 30th, 2023. So the assumption, there are some built into this draft budget that we did not talk publicly about. That's a very good summary. Any questions? Actual questions, guys, please. <laughs> <laughs> one extra one. Maybe comment that might have a question at the end of it. Um, when you're looking at the 2024 baseline budget on the, on the costs, uh, one of the only drops, I mean, I know everything is increasing in its cost to deliver, uh, a fairly significant reduction was in um, communications and marketing. And so I wonder if it is, is that just a function of, hey, we've got to make this work within a certain realm of increase of our budget, um, or is there a concerted effort on reducing communications and marketing? I always see that as a very important part of our, of, of making sure that people understand what's going on with BRTC and with our discussion with BRT notwithstanding. Um, can you shed a little more light on that? Is that just a function of everything else is growing? Good question. Um, yes, communications are not essential and important. What, what was budgeted in fiscal 2023's budget was about $565,000 for ridership and strategic transit strategic plan consultancy. So those were 2023 expenses, so they're not in the 2024. Okay. But the other shell of the marketing and communication infrastructure from the human capital standpoint and the other costs associated with the baseline is still in there. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? So Jim, that covers you too? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Um, Cheryl. Yeah, I'll, let, let's, let's um, hear from you first, and then we'll vote before we go into closed session. Okay, well, I'll be quick. I just wanted to inform everybody that Joe is working closely with uh, delegate, delegate Dolores McQuinn on a house bill for operator assault to make it a class six felony. Um, we are also working with the union to have them involved with this. So hopefully this will pass. We've tried this before and it failed, but because of the increase in assaults on operators, we're really hoping that this will be successful. And also uh, delicate Tata. Tata, okay, is working on a bill to codify microtransit funding under TRIP. So as long as there are TRIP funds, um, they're working to make sure we have funding for microtransit. So those are two important bills that are there now that we are really hoping are successful. That's all I have. Okay, that'll be tied to us from where? Vanessa. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's an Andrew Rose bill that we're supporting so we kind of clean up with it. Okay, I agree. Does that just mean to the overall trip funding or, I mean, how does that impact the, is that a net ad or is it, so it will be a net app on the state funding as uh we talk about the step down 80 60 it will always be 80 down so it won't cut into the free fare funding etc but it'll be, make that mandate of keeping it at 80 across the board as long as it exists all right good okay so we need to circle back and um approve the minutes so anyone have any questions about the minutes these on the 20th meeting if not Second. All right, move uh, and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. Consent agenda um, 
I think there were a couple of questions, not many. Um, so are we prepared to vote on that? Mm -hmm. All right. So need a motion. A move. All right. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Uh, we are now. Um, I don't have a board share report. What I share, we're going. To, I'll share during the executive session. So, um, Barney, can you get a yes, Lincoln? All right. I move the GRTC board directors hold a closed meeting pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia for the discussion and consideration of prospective candidates for employment as chief executive officer of the Greater Richmond Transit Company, um, salaries of existing executive staff members, and disciplinary action concerning certain employees. Yes. All right, motion made. Second. All right. Uh, any other comments? I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any folks? All right, thank you. I need to we uh I just need Cheryl for a moment. Everybody else will let you know when we're done. All right. <laughs>
Uh, so we need to read something, right? Yeah, who's got it? Oh, I'm sorry. Todd, you want to read it? All right. I'm sorry. All right. Whereas the personnel committee at GRTC is convened and closed meeting on this date pursuant to the affirmative recorded vote in accordance with provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas 2.2-3712 the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the committee that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law, and now therefore be it resolved that the committee hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge only public matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certifying resolution applies and only such public business matters that was, were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the committee. Um, do you want me to do the roll call or uh, chair? Uh, can, can you, yeah, I, I don't remember who did it before, but they did it. Jefferson Nelson. Aye. Vice Jefferson Hassan. Aye. Jefferson Engel. Aye. Jefferson Smith. Aye. Jefferson Anderson. Aye. Jefferson Smith. Aye. Jefferson Yuri. Aye. Jefferson Saunders. Aye. That's it. All right. All right. Uh, we missed uh, action item number six. That was the microtransit implementation plan that uh, Adrian shared with us earlier. We need to have that um, accepted. I'm sure. Sure. Can we get a motion? Sure, motion. Second. All right. Uh, motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any other comments for the good of the organization? Hearing no meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys.